Hello guys, my name is Kenny and welcome to another episode of the best tier 4 tier tanks and today we'll be at a tier 9, a tier where you can try out the tier 10 tanks without actually having to buy them because the tier 9 predecessor of the tier 10 tanks are practically the same exact thing except for the fact that you can actually meet tier 7 tanks and laugh as they'll bounce every single shell off of your frontal plate. But yeah, the tier 9 tanks are essentially the same thing as the tier 10 tanks, unless you play the Brits. Yeah, there is always a special one, just kind of surprised that it's not the USA for once. As well, I should point out that it is possibly the most well-balanced tier out of them all, so... Wargaming. Why? You literally made it possible for me to flame you for everything, but now? Now I just can't. You were like a dog of mine. I loved you, trusted you, played my farms on you sometimes, but now I can't. Wargaming, why have you forsaken me? Well, honestly, I can't even blame you because my channel grew the same a couple of months ago. But either way, enough blabbling around and let's get to the actual video, so more blabbling around. But <laughs> starting out with one of the most legendary tanks in the game, the meme itself, the T-95. Once on the front lines of war, this tank is an unmovable force. You just need to get there. The stare of this monster is the stare of death. Any moment, just a mere sight of it sends shivers down the spine of your enemies. Come on, move you fat fuck! And the deafening thunder sounding from the gun barrel could level mountains. I give up! From that epic intro we can quite easily understand that this thing is so incredibly fucking slow that it's actually possible that you could move faster than it while walking. It literally became a synonym for slugging this game over the years thanks to its previously having only 13 km per hour top speed, which has been bumped with the 9.18 update to 20, which is still lower in comparison to the average top speed of tier 9 tanks than an average IQ of Equitoral Guinea compared to the average of the world. Like. How the fuck is that even possible? That thing is already considered mild mental retardation. But don't you worry, my sweet summer child. Actually, you can only just start worrying, because this top speed has a valid reason for being so freaking low. This super heavy tank uses a highly efficient tactic first discovered by the Flintstones, but never used since then. Don't really know why. This amazing strategy heavily limits the top speed of a certain tank, however in return the tank crew doesn't have to worry about burning to death ever again, as this tank dispenses both of the fuel tanks and the engine for increased survivability. But alright, this tank is slow. End of discussion. Secondarily if it comes to this tank's description, but most likely primarily if it comes to this tank's power, this tank has a shitload of armor. Seriously, just a mere look at it and you will hear Trump getting a small loan of million dollars in the background. It is the most heavily armored tier 9 tank in the game, especially frontally where it has only one, two real weak spots, the cupolas on top. The lower plate which you might think is a weak spot, well, it is a weak spot but you'll penetrate it with only a premium dildo, so no, it really isn't much of a real weak spot. And lastly, the gun is just amazing, not really all that accurate but it has 750 alpha damage which is remarkably high and around the average DPM. TD average DPM I should add because these shitheads get to have a stronger gun than any other tank class as a trade off for being a literal cripple. They're like come on, this is the same as if you made a guy with crippled legs the fastest one in franchise. But well, it kind of makes sense. One other thing that I should add to the description of this tank is that it is a new mode tank. You can't really fuck anything up as it is a super easy tank to control. There is gonna be only one difficult thing while playing this tank and that is that thanks to his lack of mobility if some light tank will take into his mind that he's gonna circle you out your ass is most likely going to experience tranquility. But it's difficult to is more or less the only reason why it is at the fifth spot in my list. Because with the lower difficulty more people will know how to play it correctly and it will have higher win rate. So more points in my rating and thus a place in my list. Now to the fourth tank on this list, the rather recently buffed MX-30 prototype. You know what, I originally planned the T-55A to be here, but since it would awaken the Russian bias spam guy, I realized that we are gonna be better off without it on the list. Don't really feel that the baguette is much better since it can hone on to the croissants you like 10 times a minute, but well, sadly it's all this tank really has, the gun. Well, 
Now I'll have you exclude the 12 backward gears for tactical retreat and the one forward gear in case the enemy would appear behind it. But back to the gun again. Look at this. Isn't it wonderful? You get a high ZPM out of all tier 9 mediums and with a touch better crew and equipment you can feel like sort of a tier 10 medium, which is truly cute. And if that was the only good thing about this gun, <laughs> it is a penetration that's gonna go through your armor as if it was made out of butter. Sadly, you don't really have a perfect accuracy to back it up. In fact, your accuracy is only around the average, meaning that no close-ups on them big asses. But yeah, the gun is overall amazing if you look for straight up damage and or like the daka daka, you know, the I got no need for accuracy, I got bullet strategy. Other than this gun, this thing has some speed. You want some speed? Here you go. This tank is practically the second fastest tier 9 medium and even got a tank trooper speed to back it up. Just kidding, this tank is like a freaking brick. Yeah, it sure as hell goes fast if you throw it in a straight line, but the only way you can make it turn is by breaking your finger while pressing the daddy button on your keyboard. Well, it isn't that bad, like Škoda T25 bad, but still, it is worse traversed than majority of the R mediums. So yeah. You, however, do not really need all that much reverse speed since you aren't gonna be this guy that's gonna be spotting. You can get easily into the offensive spot with just the top speed and good power to weight ratio. And once seated well within them, like smiling sunshine in a pile of shit, you can start doing some serious damage with the already mentioned amazing gun. It's basically like a super fast threat at TD, with a threat that spins faster than a hamster high on Red Bull. Lastly, we got the armor, which is not exactly the greatest, but somehow magical is still good. If you think that the Barrett's got no armor and you will always load in high explosive once you see one, you're in for a bad surprise. Look at this. Whoa. The front of the thread looks like a goddamn ching chong with all that angling and plus that you got the upper plate which as well is very well angled. That means that roughly 50% of the front of this tank is gonna hold its own against anything but the Russian bias and German wieners and basically every single TD. You know what, the armor is good only while fighting on a medium tank flank, alright? Long story short, the upside of this tank are first, the amazing gun, second, the rather high mobility of a brick and third, the Zandalari armor. The Zandalari are trolls. You get it? Eh? Okay. This means that this thing has something for everyone. Well, as long as you don't mind and relies on luck. But now to the downsides. Firstly, they ain't got the Lambo hips of a T95, because who wouldn't like looking at the ass of Lamborghini while playing a tank game? And secondarily, it may run away from your garage roughly the same way it did from the Papa Smurfs garage. The first spot is actually going to be taken by not a single tank, but other than that, a bunch of tanks. What bunch of tanks? The Leroy, the Skutkuts, the light tanks. I had a lot of troubles determining which of them is actually the strongest, but then I realized that the answer to that is a bit controversial, let's say. Why? Well, since they were moved up by a tier, they became basically the same exact thing. I'd say that they got even less differences amongst them than the artilleries, and that's already something to say, since the artilleries are generally considered to look and behave the same. The reason behind this is that back in the day, when they were still at a tier 8, they were absolutely dominative. The MX was possibly the strongest of all the light tanks, capable of two clipping opponents. The Are You Kidding Me was the fastest tank in the entire game, and so on. But as they were moved up by a tier, and with the new matchmaking, they were so incredibly powerful that they had to be nerfed as they were basically replacing mediums. Instead of guns with an actual boom, you got this... The king goes pick, 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 pick. Fuck you, that meme sucks. I fucking dislike it. But these guns know at least how to do one thing correctly unlike the old guns and that is making the enemy look like a freaking Emmental. By the way, good job Switzerland, as from all that Emmental I've eaten throughout my life, I was given a reflex that whenever I smell an old shoe, my mouth starts watering. Just kidding, I'm from a cheese addicted country as well. But yeah, the lighties are pretty much even nowadays. The only different their size and shape, but that's about it. Still though, if I had to personally point out my favorites, I'd go with the AMX3090 and the T54 Lightweight, as both of them offer some special stuff on top of the basic stuff. The AMX was previously known as possibly the strongest light tank in the entire game, with its insane speed and the autoloader gun. 
Nowadays, it stays pretty much the same. While having the lowest DPM, it surely has the highest burst out of all the light tanks. And honestly said, if you ever get to shoot on a battlefield, so not while circling the big but squishy TDSs, you will shoot in short bursts of a few shells at a time. So the MX has the highest actually effective DPM. The T-54 lightweight on the other hand is basically just my love tank. A top of being a simple light tank, it has a medium tank armor. It can easily match the armor of the MX prototype. But now, lastly, the weakest one is possibly RU as it is basically nothing to offer and it is rather big. It's so big. I have a feeling that I'm gonna be demonetized for that. Just kidding, I don't give a single damn about the YouTube's money. But seriously, like, what the fuck is with the Evelyn's clothes? Like, when you pick her, you know you want me. Once again, a woman is less unsatisfied. Like, what the fuck, they are so fucking horny. Dragon, not the first time I've had a dragon. Finally, a man who can satisfy me on a freaking tentacle monster. And then you get like, don't, I've had my eye on you, now I'm gonna rip yours out. What the fuck? But now to the second tank on this list, which is gonna be the Conqueror. I actually made a full review of this tank a while ago that still has less than 100 views, so if you are interested you can go and watch it, you know, and leave a like, maybe maybe a comment, maybe even subscription, because, you know, you know, it, it kind of helps, please. But yeah, the Conqueror conquers like a bunch of bakers in Greece. Spartans! What is your profession? You know... Now that I think of it, I've always wanted to be a baker. I fucking love this game. It may not have the greatest armor, well, apart from the turret armor, which is goddamn deadly amazing, but the entirety of whole armor, just look at it. It's like a freaking salad. It's so green, it reminds me of Genji from Overwatch. Oh, and by the way, do you know why does Genji have a fucking light switch on his sword? To turn on the dragons. But yeah, the armor of this thing is rather similar to things such as the T29, Krenwagen, and so on. You got some thick turret armor, but your whole armor just sucks. But that's not the reason why I'm placing it so highly on this list. The real reason is this. Or even this, since it's a rather recent buff. Now, the Conqueror was always known for its super hard hitting gun, which had both good penetration and accuracy for its amazing 490 alpha damage, not to mention the above average DPM. But since it's a rather recent buff, it was given a second gun. The second gun has ridiculously high DPM, but sacrifices some of its penetration. A lot of it actually, but yeah. And the medium tank DPM is truly worth having a bit less penetration, at least in my opinion. But lastly, the mobility. This tank is not truly really all that mobile, it's mostly around the average of heavies. And while having the horsepower to time ratio that might be rather great, it has a terrible top speed of only a bit more than 30, limiting the overall mobility quite heavily. But now to number one tank, the best tier 9 tank out there, at least for me I should add. The Talk 2. What? It has nearly as much HP as the average tier 9. It should be capable of facing them, no problem. Every new buys logic. Praise the talk, as is the one and only true god. The followers of talk is the only true religion and shall once become the only one. Just kidding, it's the Skoda T50. It is like, any wonder why this thing is number one? It's broken. Well, it isn't just flat out OP or broken or anything like that, as I already said, the tier 9s are pretty damn well balanced, but gosh, this thing is absolutely amazing if you know how to play it. Free shot out to loader, paper armor and mobility nearing that of a bad chat. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Well, anyways, let's start with the worst thing about this tank and progress to the best thing about this tank. The worst is definitely a terrible armor, which might be looking similar to the one you may find on the Russian mediums, but trust me, it's much, much worse. Seriously, the MX may have crappy armor, but the baguettes know at least how to angle. Here? Nah. The a bit better thing about this tank is gonna be the speed, which may not be exactly nearing that of light tanks, but it's definitely enough to make the Skoda the second fastest medium at a tier 9, which is pretty neat. As well, it thankfully has rather meaningful turning speed, unlike the MX, so it won't behave like a brick. 
mega faggot. Overall, the only limiting sort of thing if it comes to mobility of this tank is the top speed of only, quote unquote, only 50 km per hour. But the main point of even playing this thing is the amazing free shot auto loader. First land, let's start with the fact that it has a DPM that is not sheer utter garbage. Like, you know, the batch has DPM. Second air, it is far more accurate than the other autoloaders thanks to it already using the APCR ammunition, which flies much faster than the regular AP ammo which you might find on the regular bad chat. This allows you to give less lead to a shot and still be capable of hitting your opponent even at longer distances. The regular accuracy stats are about the average, but there is one catch. The thing that makes this tank pop off like American Christmas. I mean the real American Christmas. The 1.8 seconds long intra clip reload. This tank has a burst higher than a goddamn nuclear mushroom. It allows you to literally fire 960 damage within 3.6 seconds of the first shot. There is no other tank at this tier capable of firing at you twice, let alone thrice within this amount of time. That is fucking amazing. You can just come from behind a corner, triple penetrate the enemy's asshole, jeez this tank is kinky, and then leave while the enemy is confused like <coughs> and your damage meter shows 1000 more. I just love it. And the best part, it leads to the TVP, and they're amazing tanks, so yeah, it isn't just one time quickie. And especially it isn't just me like in Czechoslovakian tank, because I'm a Slovak myself. But anyways, this is gonna be the end of this video, hope you enjoyed, and I hope that I'll see you next time. By the way, at this, uh, by the way, at the end of this video, I'll try to put an outro, and if there won't be an outro, please try to remind me underneath this video in a comment section, because I probably forgot to look at this part of the video while editing it. It's actually quite possible because, you know, while editing I don't always look at every single part of the video because I'm lazy and once I finish the video I'll render it even with useless bullcrap and then I realize it like two months later while I'm randomly rewatching my video because I found it and recommend it, but whatever. This is gonna be the end of the video, hope you enjoyed, bye!